guys, welcome back to another episode of The Whiskey Diary. My name is Martin Lang and today we are going to be talking about Holland Park 12 year old. We have done a few videos on Holland Park, you're more than welcome to go and check them out. But today, if you haven't, we're just going to go through a little bit of history, uh, what the distillery does, what is so unique, and then we're going to write, uh, dive right in into the Holland Park 12 year old. So Holland Park in itself has a beautiful history. Uh, they started in, well, they didn't actually start it. Uh, Magnus Union's son. Uh, he was a farmer and a butcher during the day and at night he was an illicit distillery, uh, distiller. Now in 1798 he actually got caught uh, illicit distilling and he and then after that 30 years later he actually finally got his own uh, distilling license. So what is so particular about Holland Park is actually the island Orkney is the northest island uh, uh, distillery in the world. So Holland Park is in the northeast island in Scotland. Uh, they it's a bare it's a very very bare land. Like there's the wind and the and the climate is so strong that there's no trees. There's barely no trees over there. So it's basically barren. So Holland Park uses is the only distillery in the world that uses uh, Orkney peat and locally sourced. Now, Orkney peat is a very heather influence as well, and they basically is about between four to nine thousand years old, and this produces a peat that is really slowly burned uh, peat. So that's what creates a very distinct flavour on the Highland Park. Now, the other few interesting facts as well is that it's actually, relatively speaking, is a very small uh, distillery. Uh, they only they only produce 2.5 million liters a year, uh, compared to like let's just say Kaolila, for instance, that produced 9 million uh, uh, liters a year. It's actually quite small. They only have four stills, uh, two wash and two uh, spirit still. And basically, the greatest thing about it as well is that they have a really, really good barrel program. Uh, Holland Park is owned as well. Uh, they have a sister distiller that is uh, McCallum. So because of this as well, they have a really, really good uh, aging uh, barrel or cask program, if you want to call it that way. Uh, that means that all the oak, all the barrels are created uh, and handmade in Jerez in Spain. Uh, Jerez gets the oak from either European oak or American oak. They hand build the casks. They put Oloroso sherry in them for about two years and they send it to Orkney. And in Orkney, they get emptied and pulled uh, with uh, whiskey. This produces a really pretty unique uh, flavor combination because between the sherry and the fact that it's, uh, uh, the barley is smoked by the local heathery uh, pit, it creates a really, really uh, particular flavor profile. Now, Holland Park has won countless awards, but one of the ones that I found more interesting is the fact that they won Best Distilled Spirit in the world three times in a row. This is distilled spirits all across the board, against vodka, gins, rum, tequilas, the whole lot. Um, so it's, it's, it's regarded by most people that know about whiskey, regardless as some of the best whiskey in the world. The 25-year-old whiskey is the only whiskey that ever got uh, given a 100, 100 out of 100 whiskey uh, points. Now, the 12-year-old, as I said, um, it's a, in, in Australia, for instance, is 40% ABB bottled. Uh, I'm pretty sure in, in the UK or around Europe is actually a higher ABV. In Australia, a lot of the whiskeys get uh, a special ABV for tax purposes, which is disappointing for us, but it is what it is. Uh, the new bottle is actually uh, has all these biking marks. We'll put the bottle here just so you can see it. Um, before that, the bottle used to be smooth and a different label. Now, the, uh, this one is called the Biking's Honor. Um, the, that's uh, regarding as well the nine, um, nine biking verges. Now, Harlem Park has gone and really, really focus on the Viking past because Orkney was actually colonized by a lot by Viking back in the day, and Magnus Jun's son is actually descendant of some of those Vikings. So they're really, really working on that heritage. You can see it on the label, and also this this is the the twelve year old is a core range, but you can see all the other the Valkyrie and different different other uh, single bottles that they release, all uh, relating to the actual Viking history of Highland Park. The name Highland Park actually comes from being uh, high in the park. <laughs> the distillery is actually on higher ground as well, so that's where the name comes from. The 12-year-old is a mix between European uh, uh, sherry and American oak. Uh, they don't say uh, the actual percentages, but it is uh, a really, really, really good, what you would say, 
Tewa whiskey, uh, it's $70, $75 uh, in Australia, uh, in, in Europe and in America will be actually even cheaper than that. Uh, and it's a whiskey that you can just drink at any time, any, any place, like it's, there's no, it's a delicious whiskey. You can, obviously on the nose, you get the, mar the maritime and the smokiness from the whiskey. Slightly fruity as well, being a young age as well, 12, 12 year old. And then you get obviously the heathery honey that you get from Holland Park, that little sweetness, that really unique flavor that Holland Park is well known for. I personally get a little bit of peach and a little bit of apples. So it has quite a fruity, fruity mouthful to it. Uh, and the finish, you get that cherry, uh, that slight cherry coming through. It still feels quite young as well. Um, compared to other 12 year olds that I had, this is actually quite quite light and, and like bouncy if you want to put it that way, like has a really light spirit, but it's delicious, it's like a no-brainer. Anyway guys, thank you very much for listening and we'll see you next time. Slanjaba.